Pop quiz, hot shot. What is the biggest, tallest, and costliest traffic structure built by the California Department of Transportation? Well, of course, it is the Judge Harry Pragerson's Interchange, AKA the 105-110 Interchange in LA that was the heart of this week's movie, 1994's Speed. Not yet opened when Speed filmed in the fall of 1993, the Interchange provided the perfect backdrop for an out of control bus and a burgeoning relationship based on an intense experience between Jack and Annie. Judge Harry Pragerson Interchange is a stack interchange near the Athens and Watts communities of Los Angeles and allows traffic entering the interchange to enter and exit in all directions. The interchange is over 130 feet high, making for a dangerous commute for a runaway bus. But of course, for those of us used to Houston traffic, uh, we have seen interchanges as high as 200 feet. <laughs> Still dangerous for an out of control bus. As described in a 1989 Los Angeles Times article, the interchange was the first time the state's traffic engineers have integrated three modes of transportation. Light rail trains, high occupancy vehicles, such as buses that cannot go below 50 miles an hour, and single passenger into one giant intersection. And anyone who has traveled Los Angeles freeways knows that this is both a blessing and a curse, especially a rush hour. In 1996, the US Federal Highway Administration recognized the interchange when an award of merit in the urban highways category of its biennial excellence in highway design awards. Ward recognized the interchange's design that sought to improve traffic congestion, safety, and air quality. And again, anyone who has been to LA knows that these are indeed lofty goals. But don't worry, this episode is not going to focus on the interchange or LA traffic. But it was the unfinished interchange that gave director Jan de Bont, the idea of having the bus jump across the missing section of freeway. In that pivotal scene, a ramp gave the bus the necessary liftoff so that it could jump the full 50 feet. The bus used in the jump was empty except for the driver who wore a shock absorbing harness that suspended him mid-air above the sea so he could handle the jolt on landing and avoid a spinal injury. During the course of production, 11 GM New Look buses and three Grunman 870 buses were used. Two of them were blown up. One was used for the high speed scenes. One had the front cut off for the interior shots and one was used solely for the under bus shot, including the under the bus scene where Jack was holding onto the bus with nothing more than a screwdriver into the gas tank. Movie magic. <laughs> Another bus was used strictly for the bus jump scene, which was done in one take. And all buses were painted in colors approximating those of the big blue bus serving Santa Monica, although the Transit Authority and Route 33 downtown were fictionalized for the film. I mean, something in this movie has to be made up and fictionalized, right? <laughs> One of the buses used for filming was sold at auction for $102,000 in 2018 and no word on whether Sandra Bullock or Keanu Reeve or director Jan DeBont got any cut of that. Just buses and one unfortunate Jaguar that was destroyed during production. The crew underestimated the distance the bus would travel when filming the jump and multiple cameras were destroyed on the first take. So Jan de Bont phoned Panavision and asked them to send any cameras they had lying around and promised they would be placed 
much further back this time. A 2009 episode of Mythbusters attempted to recreate the bus jump, including the various tricks they knew the filmmakers used, such as the ramp, and proved that the jump, as seen in the film, would never have been possible. But that's why we love movie magic. Speaking of movie magic, vehicle commandeering is technically a thing that could happen, but more often never would unless you're in an action-packed 90s movie. And the 90s really were a wild time. Speed was released one week before O.J. Simpson led Los Angeles police on an infamous high-speed chase. And after the infamous Bronco chase, many people who saw Speed noticed how closely scenes from the film resembled the real-life Bronco chase, including media coverage and aerial shots of Los Angeles freeways. And in a weird coincidence, Jack drives a 1968 Bronco. It's not white though. Initially condescendingly referred to as Die Hard on a Bus, Speed was not expected to be a hit and many of the stars, including Jeff Daniels, thought the film would flop. However, Speed was a blockbuster in the summer of 1994, catapulting Sandra Bullock to fame and solidifying Keanu Reeves as a bankable action star. And to her credit, Sandra Bullock actually learned to drive a commercial bus for the film and passed on her first attempt. And initially, Keanu wasn't interested in starring in an action movie, so Jan DeBont had to convince him that it would be fun and told Reeves that he'd be allowed to do as many of his own stunts as possible. And to that end, Keanu performed 90% of his own stunts, including the rescue and dramatic smooch at the end. And what a smooch it was because Keanu Reeves and Sandra Bullock fell in love while filming, but did not confirm this until 25 years later on the Ellen DeGeneres show. So go ahead and give the subscribe button a, uh, a nice acceleration so that you never miss anything. New episodes of the Real Relationships podcast premiere every Thursday and new episodes of this show also premiere every Thursday. We appreciate our listeners, our viewers, supporters, and, and until then, stay safe. <laughs>